Welcome to the AIM Learn Fast eTraining series presented by AIM Sports, providing support and training for your AIM Sports products when and where you want it. This AIM Sports Learn Fast training module is I have downloaded my data, now what? Part 1. After each session, you should be downloading your AIM Sports data logger so you get the maximum benefits. This Learn Fast video two part series will be giving you an introduction to the Race Studio 2 user interface along with the process of opening a session, analyzing your data, first a single test and then in part two by comparing the data with another session. To start the process, here is the typical screen that you will see after opening the Race Studio analysis program. This is showing a list of all of the sessions in your AIM Sports Race Studio 2 database and by default the list is sorted by the download test date with the newest test at the top of the list. But you also have the option of clicking right on the name of each column such as the test name, best lap, etc. and have all of your data sorted by that column in ascending and descending values. This can clearly be very helpful in sorting your data sessions but the most powerful method to sort or filter your test sessions is by using the selection criteria function. To start this filtering, select the Use Selection Criteria checkbox. After enabling the Use Selection Criteria function, you can see the five filtering options are now active and ready for use. We have two of the filtering options, the Championship and Test Type, not filtering any data and this is done by the choice of Show All under both filters. With the other three filtering options, Track, Vehicle and Driver, we are filtering the sessions by specific values. In this example, we have filtered out all data that is not tagged from the Watkins Glen Track, from the AIM Test Car and from the AIM Driver. In this case, we have filtered the data down to only three sessions. Watkins Practice 1, Watkins Practice 2, and Watkins Practice 3. If we wanted to select a different track or add another track, we simply click on the Select Track button. And then the track selection window will open and we can select one or more tracks. Let's scroll down to the Watkins Glen track and take a look at what a selected track looks like. As we can see, the Watkins Glen track has the yellow checkbox next to it, so it is selected. We are not going to change our selection, so to close the track selection window, we could cancel or click on the OK button. All of the selection criteria choices work the same way. One of the next LearnFast videos we will be creating will be a detailed look at the selection criteria function, so check back soon if you want more details. There is a settings function you may want to use from this test database area of the Race Studio 2 analysis software. Let's open this function by clicking on the settings button. This opens the set lap view window. There are two choices. The first choice is to allow the software to automatically disable all laps not coming from a lap marker. Basically, if this is checked, the software will disable but not delete all laps that were not started and stopped at the start finish line so the in and out laps will not be shown. This is a very handy tool and I suggest you use this selection. The other selection is to only view performance laps. This is only used currently for AIM Solo generated data and only when the Solo is configured in the performance mode. The performance mode is for straight line acceleration runs. If this is checked, any data outside of the actual performance or acceleration runs gathered by the AIM Solo in the performance mode will be disabled. I suggest you leave both of these options checked. Here we will select the automatically disable all laps not coming from a lap marker checkbox and then click on the OK button. Now that we understand some of the different options from the opening test database screen, let's go ahead and open one of our test sessions. To do this, first we need to select the Watkins Practice 1 test. You could simply double click on the test name or click the open test button. This will open the test and automatically enable the fastest lap of the session. The colors, channels open, views and many other things will be displayed based on how you close the software from your prior session. But don't worry, let's talk about some of the things we are looking at and how to change or adjust them right after we look at the main parts of the Race Studio 2 analysis software. This is the Measures and Laps toolbar. The main thing you will use this area for is to view the data channels you have gathered along with the value of each channel where the cursor is currently located. This is also where you can see and also change the color of each individual data trace. 
Across the bottom is the test lapse toolbar. This is a quick way to see which lap is enabled, as well as a place to easily change laps or select new laps by using your mouse to double click to enable an additional lap or by selecting and dragging an already enabled lap. Here in the middle of the screen is the main window. This is where you will analyze your data in great detail. We have a few other areas we will now take a look at. Across the top of the screen are the pull down menu items. This is where the commands are located for all of the different functions in the Race Studio 2 analysis software. Then we have two icon toolbars. The first is the primary icon toolbar. What icons are shown here will vary depending on the active function you have in the main window. Both icon toolbars are designed to have the functions you will be using easily available. Next we have the secondary icon toolbar. And while the primary icon toolbar turns off and on different functions, the secondary icon toolbar gives you the tools to work with the active data you have open in the main window. Now, let's go into more detail about a few of these areas and the most common functions you will be using. First is the color of the data traces. Here we can see that the GPS speed trace is green, the GPS lateral acceleration trace is blue, and the GPS longitudinal acceleration trace is a very hard to see white color. One very handy function is the per lap color function, and when this is checked, it will change all of the data traces to a single color. To make this happen, simply select the per lap color checkbox. As you can now see, every data trace is now red. We will talk more about this function in part 2 of the downloaded Now What series, when we look at comparing two laps at the same time. For now, let's turn this feature off by unselecting the per lap color checkbox. But now we still have the white data trace for the GPS longitudinal acceleration that is hard to see. To change the single data trace color, simply select the GPS longitudinal acceleration color item. This opens the color window, and then we will click on the new color selection we want, in this case black. And finally, click on the OK button. This now has changed the white data trace to a black data trace and is much easier to see. You can do this with any single data trace or even the overall color for the lap. The next function that can be very helpful is the sort channels function. The order of the channel list in the measures and laps toolbar may not be exactly what you want to see. Typically, we want this to be the most used and important channels at the top of the channels list to make them faster, easier, and more convenient to find and select. To start this function, click on the sort channels button. This will open the channel's order window. Here you simply click on the channel you want to move and then click on the move top, move up, move down, or move bottom buttons to reorder the list. If you do not see a list of your channels, make sure the sort according to user profile list radio button is selected. We are satisfied with the channel order shown here, so we will just click on the exit button. Now let's look with a little more detail at the Measures and Laps toolbar. The Ray Studio 2 analysis software uses tabs in many areas to be more efficient with screen space and we have three tabs in this toolbar. We are looking at the channel's information under the Measures tab. Now let's select the Laps tab. Here we find all of the enabled laps in the active session. The fastest lap is colorized red and is selected as shown here. You can select additional laps or a different lap to be shown in the main window just like we already discussed using the test laps toolbar. Next is the user profiles tab. To open it, select the user profiles tab. User profiles are a very powerful and time saving function. We can save all of your user defined settings of many different views. This can save you time during data analysis. Look for a detailed learn fast video on the subject soon. So we can again see all of our channels and values, select the Measures tab. One way to optimize the user interface is to resize the main window to best use the available screen space. To do this, you hover the cursor over the left or bottom edge of the main window until the cursor changes to a double-headed arrow, and then by clicking and holding the left mouse button, drag and resize the edge to the position you would like. Let's resize this main window now. We can also resize the bottom edge of the main window in the same way. Now let's focus on the tabs just above the test lapse toolbar. 
Here you will always see multiple tabs, just like we did in the Measures and Laps toolbar. Once you have a test open, you will always have two of these tabs shown, the Test Database tab and the Lap Manager tab. You will also have a tab for each data analysis function you have open. In this example, we have a Measures graph open and it is being viewed right now. Let's look at the other two tabs by first selecting the Lap Manager tab. The Lap Manager tab will show us all of the laps available. Remember earlier we selected the option to automatically disable all laps not coming from a lap marker and we are seeing the results of that setting and only are being shown full laps. Up here in this area there are many functions available to you including the GPS lap insert function that will allow you to create new or adjust GPS based start finish line locations. Please view the AIMSports Learn Fast video dedicated to this powerful function for much more detail. The last tab in this section is the Test Database tab. This takes us back to where we started, to the Test Database section. This will allow us to close the active test or open another test. Let's go back to the Measures Graph tab. Now let's discuss how we can turn on and off different channels of data that you want to view in the main window. Here we are viewing three different channels of data, GPS speed, GPS lateral acceleration, and GPS longitudinal acceleration. To remove the GPS longitudinal acceleration channel from the main window, simply click on the channel name in the Measures and Laps toolbar. Now we are just looking at two channels of data. To remove the GPS lateral acceleration data from being viewed in the main window, click on the channel name in the Measures and Laps toolbar. Now it is important to realize that even though we are viewing only the GPS speed in the main window, every other channel that you have gathered is still shown in the Measures and Laps toolbar and the value shown is the value of that channel where the cursor is currently positioned. Let's turn back on the channels we had before and show you some ways of looking at data in different views. To do this, select the GPS Lateral Acceleration Channel button, and then select the GPS Longitudinal Acceleration Channel button. In the upper right corner, these three icons are the views, and they are different ways to present the data inside the Measures Graph in the main window. Let's take a look at the three different view settings. First, click on the Show Graphs Overlapped icon. This shows all of the channels you have selected in an overlapping mode with each channel scaled from bottom to top in the same window. This can get pretty busy depending on the amount and type of data you are viewing. Now let's click on the Show Graphs Mixed icon. In the mixed view, you will notice one main difference, and that is these small number buttons added to each channel in the Measures and Laps toolbar. These allow you to select where you want each channel to be placed in the Measures graph in the main window. They range from 1 to 6. But first, in this example, you will notice the second and third channels we are viewing do not have the Y axis scale bar shown. These checkboxes in the Measures and Laps toolbar control the viewing of the Y axis scale bars. To turn on the scale bar for the GPS Lateral Acceleration Channel, select the Scale Values Radio button. To add the scale bar for the GPS Longitudinal Acceleration Channel, select the Show Scales Value Radio button. Now let's use the Change Position Numbers shown when we are in the Mixed Graph view to move a channel's data trace in the main window. The change position numbers are essentially six position toggles and you just rotate one position down for each click of your mouse or you can go in reverse and move up one position if you hold the control key down and then click with your mouse. In this case we want to move the lowest channel, the GPS Longitudinal Acceleration, from the third window up to the second window and have it share space with the GPS Lateral Acceleration data trace. We could click on the change position number five times until we scrolled around to the second window, or we could go in reverse from the current third position up to the second position by pressing the control key and then clicking on the change position number. As you can see now, we have combined these two acceleration channels into a single window. The third view that we have available is the Show Graphs Tile view. This simply means that each channel that you have turned on and is showing in the main window will have its own view space so you can turn on as many channels as you want and they will all have their own space. To activate this view, click on the Show Graphs Tiled icon. Perfect, that was the Different Views function. Across the bottom of the Measures Graph in the main window, 
you have the x-axis displayed and as we are looking at it right here we can see that we are viewing the data in the distance base starting at the left edge we are at zero feet and then it shows 1000 feet increments this distance base setting is also displayed above the main window to change to a time base on the x-axis click on the time distance icon now we can see that the x-axis is shown in time units and reporting where we are in the timed mode I suggest that you typically analyze your data in the distance mode for more consistency so we will click on the time distance icon again next we will click into the main window and while holding down the left mouse button I will scroll along and you can see all of the values updating based on where the cursor is located once we stop moving the cursor of course not only are the channel tags showing the values of the active channels but every channel in the measures and laps toolbar is reporting their value the detailed cursor position information is also shown here in the upper right hand corner this is showing the time and distance after the start finish line now let's go over a couple of the most used zoom functions because when looking at data you will often need to take a closer look here are the zoom icons in the secondary icon toolbar the most common is the zoom enabled icon let's click on it once we have clicked on the zoom enabled icon the software is expecting you to click into the main window then hold down on the left mouse button and drag an area across the screen when you release the left mouse button the software will zoom into the area you selected let's do it once now we are zoomed in on the area we selected you can zoom again if you need to by following the same steps but in this case we will use the zoom to one lap icon to zoom back out to the full lap there are several other ways to zoom in and out including the up and down arrow keys and the page up and down keys on your keyboard and also the scroll wheel on your mouse there is one more icon in the secondary icon toolbar I want to cover and that is the snap function the snap function allows you to turn off the default position of snapping the view of each lap to the start line on the left edge of the main window and the finish line on the right edge of the main window by using the snap mode you can allow the data to float irrespective of the actual start finish line let's click on the snap on off icon to show how this works then we can use the mouse to click on and grab the x-axis scale by holding the left mouse button down to drag back and forth the data right here is the actual start finish line but we can now see the data prior and after the line and this can be very helpful at times in part two of this video we will use the snap function even more when working with multiple laps to return the software to snapping the data back to the start of each lap at the left edge of the screen click on the snap on off icon the final function we will look at in this video is how to quickly show the best or fastest lap in the data a quick shortcut for this is to right click anywhere in the test laps toolbar this will bring up a context menu that will allow us to select the show best lap item and the best lap is now the active lap this ends the I have downloaded my data now what part one aim sports learn fast video in part two of this series we will talk about track maps split reports and basic data analysis steps then we will cover overlapping two laps from a single session for data analysis as well as two laps from different sessions plus more tips and tricks for more aim sports learn fast e-training content and information about upcoming on-site training seminars visit www.aimsports.com forward slash support your source for support and training of aim sports products when and where you want it